Hey there, Dangus Chu here. Today's video is on installing control cables. These cables are for controlling gear selection and throttle, and the two cables are pretty much identical. Depending on what sort of outboard you've got, you'll need various ends for these cables, and obviously if the boat's working and you're replacing cables that have gone, quite often you can reuse the ends. So when you buy a cable, expect it to come as a threaded end like this, with the locking nut on the end which means you'll either need to go to your particular brand of outboards dealer and find the ends for your model or reuse the existing ones. These cables will need replacing if they start to get stiff because of corrosion inside them. You can try and lubricate these. I've got a video on using an air compressor and a bit of hose to force oil down the entire length of the cable and a lot of time that can do a lot of good. Certainly can do a lot of good as a preventative measure by putting some oil through these once a season. But if you try something like that and you really can't get them to come good, replacing them is really your only option. You'll also want to replace your cables when they start showing this uh, first signs of deterioration like this. Uh, this cable obviously is pretty much had it now and will no longer put this boat into reverse. So this is the one we're going to be replacing. This is the throttle cable here below it, which has been replaced quite recently. And now this is the gear selector cable that's gone. So you'll see in this particular model of uh, Yamaha 40 it is, Yamaha CV, uh, it comes up here to this manual selector and it's got a little connector here that winds off. Now I've ordered another one of these because as you can see, hopefully when it comes off, this end part that threads on is sort of split and damaged and quite a few of the threads are lost. So I've ordered one of these, it may arrive this afternoon, if not we're going to temporarily put this old one back on until the new one arrives and I'll swap them over later. But once this is off, you can see this is pretty much the end of the cable that we had on that new cable. So if we come over here, this is the new cable. The only difference here is we've got this locking nut on. So when we install this new cable, we'll uh, keep that locking nut and make sure that ends up hard against this once it's back on. To disconnect this one from here, it's just in a bit of a bracket that loops round and under, like this. All outboards are a bit different here. You can see some where the bracket goes on and then a top plate will screw down holding it in. But at the end of the day, what's identical in all of them is this cable has this little groove on the cable there, just here. That groove will sit into some sort of slot to lock it in place and there'll be some mechanism for making sure it doesn't pop out of that slot. That much is universal on all outboards. The exact way that's achieved varies, but you'll always find some way of locking that in. So you need to unlock it from the outboard, take the old connector off the end, and then we can come along here. Quite often these, are, as they're fed along the side of the boat, they'll be cable tied in, so we'll obviously need to cut all those cable ties, etc. And then the next thing we'll do is go and disconnect the other end from the helm, so I'll show you that. These four controls are usually held on by a couple of screws. In this case, we've got one here and then one up here. Those, well, they're actually bolts. There's a nut on the other side. I don't know if we can see here. Hopefully you can, yeah. If you look in behind there, you'll see it's actually quite a long bolt and it's got a nut on the washer on the back. So what I'm gonna do is just put a screwdriver on here and get a, I believe it's a 10 mil span around the back there, 10 or 12. And then we'll start winding these two bolts off, which will disconnect this whole control unit from its mounting bracket here. Here I'm just using a uh, the spanner to hold the nut still and the screwdriver to wind the bolt out. Whether you wind the nut off the end and pull the screw through really depends on your exact situation, what's working for you. Last bolt sight now. With these mounting bolts out now, you can lay the unit flat and this is the red cable we're looking to replace. The cables come into this bottom section. It has a cover that's just held on by two more screws here. So we'll take those two screws off, take this cover plate, and then we'll be able to take that red cable, the old cable out completely. It's just two Phillips head screws that hold this cover on. So it's nice and easy to remove. Then once we've got those screws out, this cover just lifts off. 
first thing I'll show you is where these cables lock in at the control end. We already had a look at where they lock in at the outboard end, but this is where the casings of the tube lock in here. They go into this little groove where these two sort of buttresses come out and lock into the channel that goes around the end of the casing here. They just slide down into here and it's the casing that we just took off this cover that stops them moving at all. Once this covers off, these cables will just slide out. So this one can lift up. Then there's a little rubber spacer between the two. So make sure you don't lose that. And then this bottom case, this bottom cable can slide up. This cable's a little bit stuck in with corrosion, so I'm going to give it a spray and I'm going to need both hands to get it out. But what we've also got up here is a little circlip that goes around, or an e-clip I think they're called, goes around the pin that's a part of the actual forward controls. And that e-clip is what stops this cable from sliding up off that pin. So I'm going to get a, a pick or something and pull that pin off, which means this cable can then slide up here. This can slide out here once we got the corrosion away and then we can remove this cable completely. So down in here, just give a little bit of spray. You probably won't need to do that. And then up here, I'm just going to rotate this clip to face this way because it's, it's going to shoot off in the direction opposite to this open end. So I'd rather it just come up here into this part so I don't have to go looking for it. So it can sit down in there. And once that's clipped, that clips off, nothing stops this cable end here just coming off that pin. So this old cable, this red one here, in most instances will slide out pretty easily. But in this case, it's quite stuck, it's quite corroded. So I'm gonna go and grab a hammer and just give it a few taps in the back here, hoping to push it forward through, sort of towards the camera that way. You don't get nice videos on how it's supposed to look when you're filming Hawkesbury River boats. Okay, it's out. All that really was, was corrosion around here, but really it's just this groove slotted down into the forward controls. There is nothing holding it in other than that top plate that we removed first up. Here are our two cables now, lying on the floor of the workshop. This is the old cable we just took out, and here's the new cable. This one's a, a Morse Brown cable. Don't know if that's going to focus for you. Here we can see it's a, it's a 33C Morse cable and a 4.75 meter length. Now, this has the locking nut we were talking about and so does the old cable, but this is the fitting we need to keep. So we're going to take this fitting off the old cable and pop it onto the new cable. Now the length of these cables doesn't affect how they operate. What affects the amount of travel you get is simply how much of the cables moving in and out. This cable can be 100 meters long or one meter long and if you're still getting that much travel it'll have the same effect. All the length really affects is how neatly it fits into the boat. Obviously if it's too short you can't use it and if it's too long you're going to have a lot of cable that you have to loop up somewhere and you can't, if I take this old cable, all the cables in their spec will have a minimum radius turn you can put in them. So be sure to avoid a turn tighter than that minimum radius that the specification says and wherever possible just keep the turns as large as you can. If you're fitting cables to a boat that doesn't have cables and you're looking for the length, just make sure you don't make it so short that when you turn the outboard you end up with tension on these cables. You want to have enough slack, a bit of a loop as the, as the cable comes up to the outboard so as the outboard turns in both directions, there's plenty of free play in these cables. When it comes to feeding the cable through, you've got quite a lot of choices. You can run it through this inside part of the top gunnel. That's sort of quite a popular place. You can run it down under the seats. The, the outer casing doesn't move at all, obviously, so you're free to have that in a tight space. You're free to um, cable tie that to something else. Just be aware that if you do put it between say a rib and the hull that when the boat's moving there may be some flex and you may start chafing this cable so just be sure it's pretty protected 
on this old cable as well as that end. I can show you here we've got a few places where it's it's quite split and this can happen if the outer casing gets stressed a bit and it lets water in. So try and keep it in a protected area as much as you can. When you wind these ends onto the cable, they can be wound on to varying degrees, i.e. what you're adjusting is the distance between the center of this pin that locks into the outboard and the groove that locks the uh, cable in. Now that's a critical distance. That distance is the distance that changes depending on what gear you're in, in this case or what throttle set you've got. When you're first putting these cables together, you don't really have any reference point for where neutral and and uh, and you know forward reverse are exactly is going to end up. So what I recommend you do is put this on your cable, your end, whatever end your outboard has, wind it on enough to be secure, so you don't want it sort of wobbling with two or three threads. Make sure it's on reasonably securely, but also make sure you leave yourself with enough thread to keep going this way if you need to, but enough thread to go that way as well um, without the end becoming unstable or falling off. That way you've sort of put yourself in a nice flexible midpoint. So wind that on. When you've got it up, you can tighten this locking nut. You don't necessarily need to do that right now because you might need to make some adjustments. But when you've got that on, slip it into here, into your forward control. This one's slightly trickier because it's the bottom cable. Sometimes there is benefit in just taking the top cable out. And then because the cable's not attached at the other end, I'll show you here. Once I've got it slotted in down here, hopefully you can see that, this end here needs to go to this pin. Now this, I can move this because it's not actually attached at the other end yet. This is the first end we're doing. So I can simply slide the cable until it's good to go there. And then I can clip that little E-clip back on. My preferred way of getting these E-clips on is just to place them up against the pin like this, then put some needle nose pliers against the back of the pin and against the back of the E-clip and you can pull it on. So that's now locked on. If we do need to make an adjustment here down the track, we will need to pop this back off so we can spin this, but fingers crossed we can make all the adjustment we need at the outboard end now. So back plate screw back on. I'll rest this up here in position. I'm not going to screw it back onto here because if I do need to get it off and adjust it for any reason, I don't want to spend all the time screwing this back on, finding out I need to get to that cable head and taking it all back off again. So let's just leave that there for now and then we'll go and attach the outboard end. What I'll show you here is that once you've got one end locked in, things get slightly trickier. And that is, the casing's locked at a fixed point on the outboard here. The gearbox is in neutral, where it should be. The forward control is in neutral, but this isn't quite lining up. All we need to do now is wind this end out a bit further. And we're looking to get to the point where this drops into there pretty comfortably without really you know bringing the control towards the cable the cable should fall where the control naturally is now the only issue here is if you find yourself winding this and winding and winding and then it finally gets lined up and it's wobbly on the end because you've only got a few threads left then that's not a good situation in this case, I think we're gonna be pretty safe because we've now come too far. So I can wind it back on a few turns. Could possibly even go one more. And then by the time we get this replacement end, we'll have heaps more thread holding this on. So if it's stable in that condition, I think it's gonna be fine when the new one comes on. So this one just goes in and turns and we're locked. And that really is just about it. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the front. And we'll just look back as I operate these controls. 
So there's reverse, neutral, forward. So that all looks pretty healthy, which means I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this back onto its bracket. The ultimate test is putting it in the water though, because sometimes you can be moving this cable towards reverse, but not quite enough to actually stay in reverse with resistance on the prop that being in, in water gives you. So an on-water test is the ultimate sort of test of whether we're successful, but I certainly feel confident now to put this back on. I can hear you asking one good question at this point, and that is, what if you do have to wind this further and further and further, and it's got to the point where it's not got enough turns to be secure on the thread, and you've only just reached the point where this needs to connect. And what you need to do then is go back to the other end. And at that point, by winding that connector a little bit further off, you're pushing the cable further out and you're pushing it here. So you've got a certain amount of travel. And in that case, you need to add a little bit more length to the cable because by winding these ends off, you're actually increasing the effective length of the inner cable. So if it's too short here, if it's not reaching and you've wound it too far, go and wind the other end out a bit. If it gets to the point where you've wound the other end out as far as you can safely, you've wound this end out as far as you can safely and it's not reaching, something's up. Those distances are a manufacturer set distance. Now I forgot what I was just saying because the phone rang and Yamaha called and said here, here's your part. So we can replace this which is nice. So before that phone call I think we were talking about adjusting the ends of the cable. If you're interested in seeing more about that check out the outboard won't into gear, go into gear video because there's a little bit of a diagram and a bit more information on how these linkages all interact with each other. Pretty straightforward to swap this over. Just wind this old broken one off. Put the new one on. Now because these are lining up pretty well and they've got a reasonable amount of thread on them, I will go around and tighten up these locking nuts now. I don't think we'll be adjusting these again. As I was saying before, if the on-water tests uh, show otherwise, we'll come back, but certainly testing it out of the water, these seem to be shifting quite nicely now. Given everything else is in pretty good shape now, I'm gonna start attaching this control unit again. There's no real trick to it, it's just a bolt and nut, but sometimes you end up in this situation where the hole behind is, is sort of a little bit tough to get to. So what I tend to do in this situation is, I'll just put this camera down, but uh, lift it up, and sometimes actually just use a set of pliers to hold the nut in position while I get the thread started on it. So I'll put this bolt through and then get it a little bit through so there's some of the, the bolt poking through. Then I can take this washer and just hang that on. So we've got the nut in there just on the end of the bolt. You can put a spanner on that, but you'll find sometimes it's hard to get it to stay. So what I'll often do is just use a long pair of pliers, and then I can use those pliers to grip the, the nut on the end. And then I can just start winding it with a screwdriver. Those two bolts are on now. This forward control is now reattached to its bracket, and we're pretty much ready to go. So I just put a few cable ties on to neaten things up a little bit and we're pretty much done now. As you can see, this is a pretty straightforward job. It's a lot easier than changing a uh, steering cable, that's for sure. And the throttle and gear selector cables are pretty much identical. I guess the things to be aware of is that when you buy the cables, they won't have these ends on. So either use these old ones if they're in good condition or buy some new ones like I did uh, for this one. All outboards will have different, all brands of outboards will have different types of connectors, but one I'm thinking is quite common or finding is quite common these days is very similar to the type we had in the forward control here. 
When it comes to the length of the cable, obviously if you're replacing an old cable, all you really need to do is measure it or take a look on the casing of the cable. Quite often it's printed on there. It may not actually be a length like it was on this one, but sometimes it'll be a part number and the last few digits of that part number will be the length in feet or whatever. So, so do a bit of Googling there, see what, uh, what the situation is with your old cables. If you don't, you really can't go past just taking a, a flexible, uh, flexible um, tape measure and just running it in the path you expect the cable to go. But just jump on the website for the cables and have a look at how they're measured. Sometimes it's, it's tip to tip, sometimes it's from that groove that's the fixed portion of the cable. So just make sure that the section you measure is sort of corresponds to the length that the manufacturer is organising their cables by. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this video helps you. I really think this is one of those jobs that the DIY person can really, really do themselves. There's nothing particularly tricky about this job at all, as you, as you will have seen. Like all uh, outboard jobs, getting the old cable out might be tricky if you've uh, got a bit of corrosion, but once again, nowhere near as difficult as your average steering cable. You also might need to do a little bit of adjustment by tweaking the ends of the cables in and out but that really isn't something to worry about. It's certainly something you can do down the track. Nothing you, you know, you do when you first install it's going to stop you from doing those adjustments later. So it's a very, uh, very tweakable system. I uh, also got to say, this is the first video I filmed with uh, the new camera I got. So a big thank you to everyone who uh, contributed to that by making sort of donations. I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, and also just everyone for watching, you know, every time you watch and you, you watch an ad to the end, it, adds a part of a cent, you know, and it all adds up over time to help putting a bit of equipment back into the channel. Uh, next thing I'm hoping to fix is some lighting so we don't sort of film these in the dark so much. Uh, but, you know, we'll get there. Anyway, it's getting dark. It's time to go home. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please rate, comment and subscribe if you did and I'll catch you next time. See ya.